morning, church. Let's all stand. <coughs> Welcome in the house of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. This is a day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It's Resurrection Sunday, and we have every single reason to celebrate. We're going to celebrate life this morning. Amen. 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 He is risen. Hallelujah. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, He is risen. Amen. Come on, church. Let's clap our hands. Let everything, let everything that I breathe, that I breathe, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'll praise cause you're sovereign, I'll praise on the mountain, hey. I'll praise when I'm sure, I'll praise when I'm doubting, I'll praise when I'm numbered, I'll praise when surrounded. My praise in the water, my enemies drowning. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord, oh my soul.
continue to praise the Lord. Amen. Let's clap our hands. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Amen, church. The next song we're going to sing is about love and the ultimate sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross. Hallelujah. Amen. He thought I was worth saving. He thought I was worth keeping. So he sacrificed his life so we can be free. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. We're going to shout on the count of three. I am free. One, two, three. I, I am free. free. You thought I was worth saving So you came and changed my life You thought I was worth keeping So you cleaned me up inside You thought I was to die for So you sacrificed your life So I could be free So I could be whole so I could tell everyone I know you, you thought I was worth saving. saving. So you came, so you, you came, came and changed my life. You, you thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. So you cleaned me up inside. You, you thought, thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life. So I could be free, so I could be whole, so I could tell everyone, oh, you thought I was worth saving, so you came, you thought I was worth keeping, so you clean me up, you clean me up, oh, you thought I
Hallelujah. Come on, church. Let's just praise God for the sacrifice that he made on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. We give you all the glory, Lord. We give you all the praise. Come on, church. You can do better than Hallelujah. that. We are celebrating life this morning and life in abundance. He gave us a second chance and we're going to be give God the praise, the honor, the glory this morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord another hand of praise. He deserves all the glory, all the praise. Amen. Amen, church. You may be seated. Amen, church. Amen. Uh, I knew my wife was stressing because I was still busy there at the back. So uh, I can still run. Even at 65, I can still run. And I can still out outrun many of you young people. So we want to say welcome. Welcome to one and all present here today. You know, I thank God, some of you have been resurrected from the bed this morning. Those who are, are used to sleeping, the Lord has awoken you by the quickening of his spirit. Hallelujah. So guys, uh, we're so happy to have with us this morning, Stan Liam Kize. Stan, please stand. We're so happy to have you here. Hey, there are two Stanley Mkizes. There's junior and senior. According to... Yeah, according to what is on this page. Please stand, guys. Uh, and please don't sit until I say you may be seated. Rastan, you are right with that. Stand, stand. Okay, and then we also have Anne Bennett. Where's Anne? Good to have you here. Uh, so your daughter, Sister Bennett, has welcomed you even before I did into this church. Raylene, thank you for bringing your mother along. And then we have Jose Mahale. Where's Jose? Welcome, my baby. Remain standing. We're happy to have you here with, uh, with the jacks, with all the jacks over there. And then uh, Charlotte, Murenje, where's Charlotte? I met Charlotte there this morning, just now. I'm so happy to have all of you present here with us. Now, guys, uh, Stan and, and, and Stan came all the way from Senton because they came to support Baba Malumi. Amen. And uh, the, the, the babies are also here to come and support their father. And uh, also, uh, we want to say to all of you guys, you... This is now guaranteed, and it's a money back guarantee that you're going to receive the warmest welcome you have ever received. Okay, just check this out. One, two. Don't sit, don't sit, don't sit. Now tell me, am I a prophet or am I not? 
I said you will receive a, a welcome you've never received before. Was it true in? Stand true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And tell me, uh, 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 Charlotte, did you ever receive such a warm welcome before? Never, ne? And Jose, have you ever received such a warm welcome before? Yes, I told you so. I told you so. And, and guys, let me also say, you even when you get home, the, your people won't be as happy to see you as we are. <laughs> so let's give it up for all our VIPs, beloved. I know that you are going to have a blessed time in the Lord's presence and in the presence of his children. Also, I can tell you that the word of God that we are going to receive this morning when from his servant will be a word that will have impact in our lives. And uh, we have been blessed by this couple. And I hope I don't cry today. Yeah. I'm so happy. Uh, you know. But, uh, Baba. Can't say much. Until you have said it. Beloved. God bless you, and thank you for gracing us with your presence. We're going to have a great time in the presence of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Also to our online viewers, thank you guys for joining us online. Uh, it is so good to have you, but it will even be better to have you here in person. Thank you very much. Amen.
this beautiful Sunday school. You make me so proud. <laughs> I greet you all. Let me just calm down. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's awesome, isn't he? Amen. All right, family. I just want to extend my thanks to Pastor, Pastor Jeff, Pastor Berry, the board. Thank you for this opportunity to stand here before you to share a message on tithes and offering. Um, to, bring, to bring and to give our, of our tithes and offerings unto God not only reflects our heart for God and belief that he will take care of our needs, but also it aligns our will to his and it also tunes our willingness of heart to be generous to the Lord who has already given, given us everything. Now reading from Exodus 35 verse 22, where the Israelites brought of their wealth to build the tabernacle. So this is one way of God's people showing their willingness to be generous to God. So it reads, all who were willing, men and women alike, came and brought gold, jewelry of all kinds, bro brooches, uh, earrings, rings, and ornaments. They all presented their gold as a wave offering to the Lord. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 to 7, the word of God says, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will reap, will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart, a willing heart, to give, not reluctantly, or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So in my time of preparing to share this message, and with it being Easter, I actually had this moment where I pondered that if God, when he was sacrificing his son as a gift worth more than any of the gold that any of the Israelites could present to him towards building their tabernacle, even though it was painful for him, he still presented us with the gift worth far more than our tithes and offering that we can present to him today. Just picture it with me, beloved. It may have not been a cheerful moment for him, as the word says in 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 to 7. But our Father God must have had to decide in his heart, just as we are meant to decide in our heart what it is we are going to give to him. He had to decide in his heart to give us this precious gift of salvation. And if God, who has been our model and we are made in his image, if he has already shown us what it means to sow generously, how much more are we to do the same? So in conclusion, beloveds, as believers who have and are still receiving the precious gift of Christ, we are to give generously, give willingly, give cheerfully. And I'd just like to close off with the following verse taken from Proverbs 10, verse 22. The blessing of the Lord brings wealth without painful toil to it. Beloved, may we all stand so we can just bless the tithes and offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for the precious gift that you are to us, first and foremost, foremost and for the precious gift that you gave of your son. We are thankful, Father God, that you enable us to create wealth, we are grateful to you, Lord, because you've given us first that we can give you, and that you loved us first that we can love you. Father, I bring every member that is here today, and even those that could not make it this morning. And I ask, Lord, that you will bless their hands. Bless the work of your hands. Those that are ready to give this morning, Father God, will you pour out your unmerited blessing and favor upon their lives. And those that are not able to as yet, Father God, I know that you are a way maker, Lord, and you are promise. your promises are yes and amen this morning. I pray that you bless the tithes and offering, that it may be used to expand your kingdom, Lord, and to reach those that are lost. And I know without a doubt that that is what it will be. I pray that you bless us all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Okay, beloved, you may proceed to the front. Thank you.
Good morning, church. These are the birthdays for March. Happy birthday to Denise Barians, born on the 28th of March. Happy birthday to Jesse Masendu, born on the 29th of March. Happy birthday to Ricky Bison, born on the 30th of March. Happy birthday to Shailene Ramesta, born on the 31st of March. Happy birthday, guys. Anniversaries for March. Happy anniversary to Tawia and Tracy Chenwu on the 29th of March. Happy anniversary, guys. Notice, when tithing, please ensure that you use the reference as tithes, your initial and surname. This will help us with your receipt and also important for size and auditing purposes. Give your tithes an offering using either EFT, bank deposit, or leave it directly at the church office. Bank details, bank, EDSA, account number 405-286-6096, account type, check. Branch Soundgate. Special announcements. If you don't belong to any house church, leave your contact details by the church front office. Please join us for intercession year church on Saturdays at 7 a.m. and on Sundays at 7.30 a.m. Please join us for Wednesday prayer meeting services year at church at 7 p.m. Also join us for Tuesday prayer meeting service year at church at 10 a.m. Leave your names and sad numbers by the church front office and start receiving updates via WhatsApp and bulk SMS system. Please scan the QR code at the back of your bulletin and update your information. If you don't have a quiet time schedule, please speak to your shepherds. See what's happening this week in our bulletin. Take them with you and share with others at home. We are pleased to have you worshipping with us on our social media platforms. We encourage you to keep watching us and unite in prayer. God bless you. go to Exodus chapter 12 verse 23 it says for the Lord will pass through the land and strike down the Egyptians but when he sees the blood on the top and the signs of the door frame the Lord will pass over you I want you to remember that um you know, when the Egyptians were there, I mean, the Israelites were there in Egypt, they obviously thought 
that they were never going to get out of Egypt. And we see there were 10 plagues, isn't it? All right. We see how the plagues were there. And uh, I suppose the guys in Egypt must have wondered, or even the Israelites must have wondered, how are we going to get out of here? And little did they know that there was still one move. Now, I'll come to that now. And this is when they were, um, when they had to put the blood on their doorposts and so on, so that the angel of death passes over them. Now, it reminds me, this morning I was listening on the radio as we were coming to church. It was, they were preaching in Afrikaans. And this guy made a very profound statement. And he says, uh, I'm not too sure how many of you guys are familiar with chess. I am not. But there's one thing that I know. And there's a term that says checkmate. Meaning that there's no other moves. Now, let me give you an example also. This guy went to an art gallery. And then he looked at all the paintings on the wall there. And then he started and he said, this is lies. This is lies when he looked at this painting. And then the people around him were wondering now, why is this guy saying this? And then uh, the, the curator of the, the gallery came and he says, hey, what is wrong? He says, no, you must change this painting or you must change the title. Because the title of this painting says, Checkmate. But I can see this board here. And I don't see this checkmate. I see there's another move. And you know, throughout life, throughout the Bible, it speaks about also the fact that, uh, you know, when the when the boy came with five loaves and two fish, the people must have wondered, checkmate, what do we do with this? We must feed all these people here. And they didn't realize that there was one more move. How many times, you know, when, when, when Christ was on the cross, Satan must have said, this is checkmate. Not realizing Sunday was coming. And as we partake of the emblems that God has asked us to Partake also. Let us use this moment as a moment where we will ponder and say, where are we in life? Does it seem as though we are in checkmate? You know, you look around and you say, you know, you don't have money, you, you are sick, you are whatever, and you think it is checkmate. There's always one move. All right? And as we partake of that this morning, let us treat it with the thing, uh, that, that holiness that God expects from us. And as we partake, please do not partake if you know that you haven't yet made it right with the Lord. And even those that gives their little babies to take there, 
Because you see, what is going to happen is they're going to think one day that this is nothing I can go and have there without knowing the real meaning of that. So as we partake, may we search ourselves. May we partake and know that God always makes a way for us. Let us pray. Lord, I pray, Lord, this morning, Lord, even as the disciples, when you died also, they thought it was checkmate because this Lord that they served was no more there. And they thought, what are we going to do right now? And the situation where we may find ourselves in this morning, we may also say it is checkmate. But let us search ourselves and may God search us also and find us worthy to partake of the emblems of his body and his blood. My God, I pray, O oh Lord, that you will touch us now in Jesus' name. For those who are on the right-hand side, you can go there. For those that are on the left-hand side, you can go there. For those that are up there, you can partake there. And then we'll ask our worship team to sing for us.
1 Corinthians chapter 11 from 23 onwards says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. I, the Lord Jesus, on the night, or the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke it, And he says, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. And then he says, do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. <clears throat> my God, I pray, Lord, that Lord, you would help us, Lord, that we will focus on you and you alone. Lord, that even, Lord, today as thy word would go out, Lord, that you'd speak to each one of us and help us, Lord, that we will be in a place where God wants us to be. Lord, that we will listen and not only listen, Lord, and be hearers of your word. But let us also be doers of your word. In Jesus name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Am I on? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I greet you in the mighty, matchless name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I say to you, today, today is a wonderful day. Amen. It's a day in which we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are not commemorating, we are celebrating. If we were to commemorate, we would have brought in the reefs and the flowers, and it was going to be a somber moment. We'll be laying it next to his grave, and then we'll be saluting in silence. Here lies the greatest prophet of all time. But with our Lord, it is different. Because he is risen. He is not here in the grave. Um, yeah, allow me to make some few, 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 few announcements before we come to the word of God. I promise you will come to the word of God. I also want to greet all those who are 
online. I hope some of them are my friends. Uh, if you are my friend, wave your hand wherever you are. Uh, we'll see you somewhere. Uh, and those upstairs, wave your hands. We recognize you. It is full house up there. Hey, Ricardo, I was wondering when you are. And Kami, good to see you there. Great stuff. Now, <clears throat> on the 10th of March, a couple of weeks ago, we celebrated our 40th anniversary <laughs> with my wife. Amen. Uh, I still have to learn to call him my cherry. Uh, <laughs> only my pastor can do that very well. Uh, if I say my cherry, I think it will cause a lot of rumbling somewhere. But uh, I still have to learn that. So far, I call her love, and she calls me love. And the Lord blessed us with a wonderful, memorable trip to the U.S., where we were so well and generously treated. And it was worth every day that we spent there. In fact, I said to them, I'm glad that we chose to spend the little money we had on the tickets to get there, rather than to go and be bent with the sun at Mauritius, uh, celebrating with the seashore. <laughs> so we celebrated with human beings, and uh, it was wonderful. And uh, we're so lucky for the two and a half weeks that we were there, almost every day without exaggerating, we were being entertained, taken to some of the top restaurants that I've ever dreamt of. The Lord is wonderful. And, and let me tell you, we went at a time when the rent is trading at 19.85. So when somebody says you can buy anything on the menu, and you realize that we have spent $200. Then you say 200 times 10 is 2,000, times 2 is 4,000. <laughs> that is the amount of money I spend on food that somebody paid without thinking and blinking because they were honoring us. And I said, oh, I'm happy my pastor is not here. <laughs> uh, He'll have taken us to Kentucky all the way. <laughs> and when you get to Kentucky, my pastor has chosen a menu for you. <laughs> Streetwise 2 is on special. <laughs> so, wow. So... I'm so blessed, and, and, and somehow the Lord was really reviving and restoring relationships with those that are our brothers, that other side. And uh, despite the fact that we lost our passports, which cost us another money that which we did not have, we still don't have our passports. But the Lord graciously, graciously dealt with us, with our embassy, in Washington, D.C. We actually went there to collect our traveling documents. And we were so well received, we felt at home. Amen. And finally, we were on our way back here. And the Lord is great. Amen. Amen. Now, another announcement. Uh, the last time I was on this pulpit, it was in December. You remember? You remember? Yeah, uh, and then when, when, when I was on this pulpit, I made a pledge and I made a vow. And I was joined by a number of people. I don't know them. But I hope they are still sticking to their pledge. As I hope you are still sticking to your pledge. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because I'm still sticking to our pledge. And I will stick until the end Amen. of six months. Amen. And I'm almost there. Amen. I'm left with three months of my pledge. And regardless of where I am, I will keep to that pledge. We made that pledge out of faith, not out of abundance. Amen. 
and I believe it's because of that pledge that I managed to go to the States. And I managed to get all the blessings that I received. Because God is faithful and is wonderful. And let me tell you, the dream of going overseas was gone. I never thought I'll set my foot there again. And I ever, never thought I'll ever afford to go there. But, but God is God. He made it possible. Because it's not yet checkmate. My brother, it's not yet checkmate. There's still another move. Praise the Lord. Yeah, this other one is not so easy. The, the, the third announcement. But before I do that, let me acknowledge Brother Stan Mkize and Stan Junior. I, I didn't know Junior, but I now know Junior. Hey, Junior, you look, you look handsome. You must be looking like your mom. <laughs> uh, but thank you very much to come and support me. Uh, Brother Stan Mkize is a, is a friend, is my brother, and I've known him for many, many years. At one stage, he was heading the Vets Business School, and uh, when he was doing that, he invited me to address the graduation ceremony of the MEP class of, of some sort. I can't remember MEP what, but uh, he, he actually asked me to come and address the graduation at Vets to come and talk about ethics, you know, and business ethics, and I was amazed, and, and I was so well received. And he's such a humble person. He headed that institution. He never asked to be called a professor. Because nowadays with black people, you ask them to come and lecture. Tomorrow they are professors. <laughs> Just through a lecture. So he never asked for that. He's very humble. And uh, I believe God is joining us. There's, there's a journey that we need to travel together. Uh, me and him. And uh, as he also journeys with God, for God to unfold his purpose clearly in his life. And I believe he's got a calling of God upon his life, and then God will use him mightily uh, very soon. Uh, I was expecting somebody, but I don't see him, so I won't comment, uh, because he was not mentioned anywhere. Uh, but then let me call my family to come to the front. To the, to the stage. Uh, I've got my two children, three children, and two grandchildren. Uh, three children, two daughters and one boy for today. Yeah. This is how I looked when I was 30. You see, I was smashing, ne? <laughs> and then this is Mulimo and uh, his wife, Grace. Uh, my sister's children, Dimpo and Loazi. Loazi, I, I used to look like this when I was his age. <laughs> and then this is my little one. You can see uh, Bonolo, and then this is my love. Okay. Good. Good. Now, and, and, and I hope I hope the lot is the lot has interrupted your program. Ne? Forget about pickle fish and something else. It's Resurrection Day. Forget about it. What what are you eating today? Pickle fish, don't, hot cross buns, don't worry about them. Uh, in January this year, I was supposed to start a program with AFM called MIL, Ministry Integrated Learning. I was supposed to, do, to start my probation, and I was supposed to start my studies for four courses with the aim that next year, Maybe this time I'll be ordained. And uh, beginning of the year, when the pastor introduced the theme of the month, Vessels of Honor. You remember that one? 
When I engaged with that message, I got interrupted. I got interrupted by the Lord in a very miraculous way. And uh, I had to share what that encounter that I had with the Lord, with, with my pastor and the board. And at the last board meeting, we spent 40 minutes sharing my encounter. My encounter with the Lord resulted in me having to pull out of the program. It was as though God was saying, if you go this program, you are going to do it for obituary. Because by the time you finish, you'll be left with two years, then you are going for retirement. I don't want you to go that route. I've got a grander plan for you. Um, I still want to use you as a vessel of honor. And for me, it was like if I go that route, I'll end up being a flower pot and not a wine jar. A wine jar entertains kings and queens. A flower pot, particularly the one that stands outside, stays out there. And we don't see it, we see the flower. So God, God came to me and indicated to me that he wants me to finish in the ministry strong. And he wants me to finish that assignment that he gave me. At the same time, I've been running away from the fact that back home, where I started the ministry, where I started the ministry 22 years ago, and I left it five years ago, things were not going well. Things were not going well. In fact, there was a threat that that ministry would disappear. And God called me to go back there to rebuild the work and to finish strong. So I want to make it very clear. Uh, I'm ending today here, going back to where God wanted me to go. I want to make it clear, I'm not living here because of sin. Of any kind. Because there are, there, sin separates people. There's a sin of jealousy, sin of greed, sin of lack of humility, submission, none of those things. Uh, I'm very grateful. This is one church almost for two years where we were well received. In fact, when I came here, my friend, my brother, my pastor said to me, Baba, we are going to serve you. And I did not know what he meant. But I saw it every day. He served me and he served my family. I, I have free lunch every Sunday. I just choose not to take it. But it is there. And it has been there. With love. I've been so well served, not only by them as a couple, but by them as a family. That is their children, their grandchildren, their entire family, Sister Coco and her children and her grandchildren. They made sure that every Sunday, we are at home. And for the past two years, we spent it here every Sunday afternoon. It was as though we don't have a family. It was as though we don't have friends back home. But we allowed them to serve us because they are friends. They are servants of the Lord. And we have an agreement with the board and the pastor that we will continue to forge the partnership. Amen. We'll continue to forge the partnership. And, and we have this agreement with them that they, they are free to continue to schedule me to preach at a regular time that they seem fit. If they say we have scheduled you in July, I'll come and be here. And I'm sure where I'm going because I'll be in charge of the pulpit. I'll call my brother to come and preach. And not only him, but all the friends that I've made in this church. It's not only them. I have a house church of elders. Brasnif and his beautiful wife, Sister Alice. Also very wonderful people, very generous people. Dr. Maggie, 
and Dr. David. Dr. Maggie is recovering from operation. Beautiful people that are my friends today. Brawili is my friend. He's not here. He's in Venda. There's no way you'll find a Venda guy during Easter weekend here. <laughs> so he's gone home. Pastor Chalo, my friend. Pastor Chalo Low and his beautiful new bride, Shona. You've been such wonderful friends. Rona, sorry. Shona, sorry, Shona. Rona. Shona is there. I think my eye is on Shona. And Pastor Ralph. Beautiful friends, beautiful leaders. Uh, Pastor Ralph is one of the most articulate speakers you can ever come across. He speaks fluent Khoi Khoi. He speaks fluent Afrikaans and English. And then he's trying Zulu, I think, uh, some other day. But he's a wonderful person. So I hope I've put it very clear. Uh, and I want to be released in that spirit. I want to be released in that spirit to say, this is family. And then if anything is required of me, I'll be there to serve. So my departure is to strengthen, not to weaken. It's to strengthen, and I know what to get from this church, to strengthen that which I'll find to be weak where I'm going. There are so many lessons I've learned, and there are so many lessons I'll continue to learn together with you. But you must know that I really, really love you. And uh, Ledwin, I know where, wherever you are, you are taking copious notes. And... Uh, and uh, you, you are such a wonderful friend, such a wonderful leader. And I pray that God will do wonders through your life. Amen. And Ricardo, and come in. I'll talk to you after my message. You'll be part of my message. I, you'll be part of my message. I can guarantee you. God bless you, my pastor. Baba, yes. you know you, you meet some people and they leave and they bring more joy when they leave than what they brought when you met them. And then you have people and our time together wasn't just the two years here. We were friends, comrades, mm. even before you were married, mm. before you dreamt of your cherry, mm. or even your children. So our relationship go back many years. But let me tell you, and even what the people responded to you, this morning is that you and your cherry have been gifts to this church, to this body of Christ. One of the most prolific preachers, you have been an absolute gift to AFM Victory Celebration. I had to make my heart strong not to cry this morning because our time together was an amazing time. Amazing, amazing. When you came, you said that you just want to come and just be available to whatever the leadership think was necessary. You have made such an indelible impact, imprint 
on many hearts. We thank God for your humility, your cherry, our times together. And I know this is not the end. Also, your children, I want to thank them for sharing you guys with us. Thank you guys. You were here when you were able to. And you also came to enrich us as a church. Baba, as you said, we will not sever ties. Mm. We will be sister churches. Mm. Yes. We will still have you on our preacher's plan. Mm. You can prepare for August, sis. Yeah. <laughs> she is coming. Yeah. <laughs> She's coming in May already. Yeah. So yeah. that yeah. one you know, but August, you're already booked. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Thank you for the contributions that you have made. Thank you for your humble spirits. And thank you for planting, not just planting, you started by plowing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Baba Stan, I was also at business school as a student. I don't think you were there then. <laughs> that was when I was still young. And when government still used to pay for my fees. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm talking about the democratic government mm. of South Africa. Welcome to you and your lighty. It is great to have you here and supporting this family, this couple. May you go home blessed and enriched by what you have experienced here today. Thank you, Baba. Thank you, Baba. Let's give it up. Come on, let's stand again. Yes. Amen. Baba Modise, good to see you, sir. Where is he? What, Lodi? I've seen you. <laughs> Upstairs. Amen. Amen. Emmanuel was also back from an extended stunt in Nigeria. They're next to Baba Muatlo. Oh, he's lost weight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, thank you very much for honoring God's servants. Thank you. That is how I know you. As loving. Stan, these people are the most loving and most humble people you will ever find. And then they second. <laughs> <laughs> they in the valve. Yeah. They're going to be second. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you very much, beloved. You may be seated. Amen. I just, before I give over, just two more announcements. And I know that we are upsetting the program. But you know what? The program is made by men. And it's also changed by men. Lisa Dube. Where's Lisa? Welcome, Lisa. Good to have you here with us. All our visitors... All of you who came for the first time, please come and blom with us. If you don't know what is blom, flower. <laughs> flower with us. If you go through these double doors, there's a little gate. There's a, there's my office is on that side. Please come and just spend some time with us to get to know us, to get to know the church. 
also please don't forget all of you who have given your hearts to Jesus there will be a baptismal service next week Sunday but on Saturday from three o'clock please come right around not the main gate the, the back gate here and uh, come at three in my office and uh, I'm sure Dr. Crowich or uh, 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 Brother Orbit, and I think they are in Zim uh, this, during this time. And uh, so they will be there to teach you all about baptism, uh, what, it's, what is the meaning thereof, as well as how to prepare yourself for baptism. So don't forget after the service, just uh, give in your names and your contact details. Beloved family, thank you very much. Amen. <clears throat> very yeah. much. Yeah, I can take, Grace can stay. Um, yeah, I, I think all, all the announcements are done, eh? and you are done with me. Now this is the time for the Lord. Okay. Uh, initially, I was going to I was going to preach about my departure. It is hot. It's still on. Hello? Hello? It's on. Okay, I was going to give this to Grace, but it looks like they don't use this for singing. Uh, yeah. Oh, there's an anointing there. Yeah, I, I, I just want us to gather our thoughts, our spirits, as we are about to hear God's word. Okay, switch mine off. Which one? Both. Okay. Um. It's a guest. It's not rehearsed, but it's a guest. The spirit moves the way he likes. And he likes the way he moves. So don't punish them for not rehearsing the word. Praise the Lord. you 
worship you. I worship you. Oh, you are here now. You are here. Turning lives Turn around. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. seats. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. We pray that through your Holy Spirit, you will give us insight into your word beyond sight. 
may we be able to see your word beyond its reading. May we encounter your revelation through your word. May your word come afresh upon our lives. May your word shine your light into our hearts. May your word have its way of changing our lives forever. May your word reveal the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ like it has never done. I pray in the name of Jesus. Anoint every one of us gathered here today. Let no one come out of here without having seen who you really are. Let no one come out of here being blind as they came. But let us come out of here having seen who you really are. You are a way maker. You are a miracle worker. That's who you are. And we worship you. And we thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. I've titled our talk this morning, Meeting Jesus Along Life's Road of Despair. I hope I will be short because I'll try to read everything so that I don't expound it too much. Um, I'll do a brief inter I mean, introduction and I'll go quickly into the body and uh, quickly into application and conclude, then we'll be out of here. But I want to believe that God also wants to, because this is what he told me, because I did not sleep the whole night for the first time in my life. And God was saying, from now on, I want to authenticate my word with power. From now on, I'm the one who authorizes you, <coughs> and I'm the one who authenticates his word. Because he said that to Jeremiah. He said, I watch over my word to perform it. So sometimes we speak and we preach the word of God, and we don't allow God to perform his word, to fulfill it. So I pray that God will help us to do so. The text, if you have your Bible, put your finger, I know you have digital Bibles, but put your finger in Luke chapter 24, verse 14, I think we're going to try and go up to verse 35, 21 verses. That's why I don't want you to stand and read it. By the time we finish it, you'll be tired. So I want you to relax and listen. Uh, Jesus preferred people who would sit down and listen. So, a few days prior to the pre-dawn raid on Gethsemane, Jesus mounted a donkey, a recognized symbol of peace and unmistakable identification with the Messiah, and rode into Jerusalem to the cheering of thousands. This we celebrated even where I was last week on the day that is called Palm Sunday. Willing subjects of the king paved his path with their cloaks. Others cut palms branches, laid them along the stone pavement and shouted, save us. Save us. He was their Messiah. He had promised abundant life. His followers fully expected he would become their king and that Israel would again be prosperous and free. But less than a week later, as the sun fell behind the horizon towards the end of an unforgettable week, the Son of God hung cold and lifeless on a Roman cross just outside the city walls. His followers were left devastated. 
discouraged and utterly disappointed. Perhaps you can identify with the pain of Jesus' followers. Perhaps you have experienced the death of a dream or had the bridge to your ideal future crumble beneath your feet. You are not alone. I personally know what it is to feel disappointed and discouraged. I personally know what it is after victory, after seeing God using, I mean, using me and, and, and showing me so many miracles in life, and all of a sudden those things disappear. I know what it means, what it means to, to abandon one's call and calling. I know what it means to almost, almost having your entire family disappearing in front of you. I know what it means to be lonely. I know what it means to have no money. I know what it means to have that five rent or hundred rent poured into your vehicle. And you pray that it will stretch and stretch. And every time you come and uphill, it's like you can stand on your seat so that it uses less petrol. And it can take you over the hill so that you can use less petrol. And you get home without getting stuck on the way. I know what it means to have thoughts of throwing oneself into the pool and getting rid of your life. I know what it means to have that pain of feeling like God is far away from you, of feeling like God does not exist. I know that feeling after experiencing maybe a triumphalistic environment or a feeling you have been coming from a crusade or you have just accepted Christ and down the line, all of a sudden, there are so many temptations, so many troubles, so many, so many tribulations that are coming your way. I know what it means to feel disappointed by the Lord. As the sun rose on Sunday morning and the Passover feast came to an end, two of Jesus' followers left for home, clearly disillusioned and resolving to leave their foolish dreams in Jerusalem forever. Even as rumors of resurrection circulated, the dejected pair began the seven-mile walk to the village of Emmaus. Verse 14, 17 of 24, Luke says, they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still looking sad. Luke describes the disciples' conversation as bantering ideas back and forth with great emotion in a shared search for answers. When Jesus asked, what are these matters you are discussing? Luke uses the term antibalo, which literally means to throw back and forth. You know when you, are, when you are in trouble, and I think we experience this during the COVID a lot, we will chat back and forth with conspiracy theories. What really happened? What is behind this? Searching for answers. These two men were bantering back and forth with ideas. What could have happened? Were we fools to follow this guy? Among other things, I'm not sure that's what they said. But the disillusioned followers desperately wanted to know why the expectations of the Messiah had come to such a tragic end. And so they were exploring several theories. Interestingly, the eyes of the two disciples were divinely prevented from recognizing Jesus. To them, he was just an ordinary man, 
a stranger out of the shadows, joining them on their journey. Joining them on the road of disappointment. As Luke recorded the story, he employed a clever narrative device called literary irony for those who know English better than I do. In which the reader is aware of the important facts that are hidden from the characters, isn't it? Even as we read and go through the story, we who are reading, we look, it looks like we know better than these two guys. That they are with the Lord, but they are not aware. That's the type of literary genre that Luke uses. 17 and 18, and he said to them, what is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still looking sad. Then one of them named Cleopas answered him, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? His question was laughable, given his audience. I mean, he's talking to Jesus, he's questioning him because he does not know. He does not know who he's talking to. If anyone understood what had happened, it was Jesus. As, and if anyone was clueless, it was Cleopas. Nevertheless, Jesus encourages the disciples to talk, not to humiliate or chastise them, but for a different purpose. He plays along with them by asking, and he said to them, what things? And they said to him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty indeed and weight, before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and beside all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. That phone does not want you to get the revelation. I can tell you, you are going to end up more, more worse than Clopas. And with that statement, Cleopas revealed the source of his trouble. His noble expectations for social, political, and economic Messiah had failed to materialize. His limited perspective would not allow him to embrace the Messiah's true agenda of which economic prosperity and political liberation were only a tiny fraction. Cleopas' expectations yielded another tragic consequence. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, look, listen to him. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning. And when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had not even seen a they had seen they have even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. This passage exposed three faulty perspectives coated that perspective that coated their eyes like layers of dark film, shielding them from the truth and keeping them perpetually groping for answers in a despairing darkness. There were three faulty viewpoints that made it difficult for these two disciples to see who Jesus was. Number one, their viewpoint lacked a spiritual dimension. They understood the events from a human perspective. You see, they were like me when I was not saved. During this time of Easter, I will jump from one church to the other, looking for girlfriends. 
nothing else, looking for girlfriends. And then hoping that I'll catch them in an atmosphere of calm and somberness where people are commemorating the death of Jesus Christ. Take note how Cleopas characterized the death of Jesus. Don't miss the lack of divine involvement. He saw Jesus as a prophet before God and all the people. But the chief priests and the rulers handed him over and crucified him. That's how he saw Jesus. Jesus, however, did not see the events of that day that way. In his trial before Pilate, he said, you would have no authority over me unless it had been given you from above. That is a spiritual dimension. And the disciple Peter will later declare to the same chief priests and rulers after he received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When you read Acts chapter 2, verse 22 to 23, the apostles are not defining Jesus as a mere prophet that was crucified. Peter says, Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst. As you yourself know, this Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. Peter then added, but what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ will suffer, he does fulfilled. Jesus did not die by accident. Jesus was crucified according to God's foreplan. And Paul somewhere says, he was crucified before the foundations of the earth. Shortly after this, the community of believers identified with the voluntary sacrifice of Jesus Christ. While enduring persecution, they praised God, saying, For truly, in Acts 4, for truly in this city they were gathered together against you, holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. Now, that is viewing the world from a divine perspective. When life is no longer fantastic, when your expectations crumble and dreams fade, it is easy to slide into a funk. Circumstances become our taskmaster. People, especially those who took part in causing our pain, stand taller than God. But when we see things from a spiritual perspective, we are able to see things like the way Stephen saw things. Stephen does not magnify the stone throwers and those that were throwing rocks at him. But he looked up and he saw he saw the Son of Man standing on the right hand of the Father. He did not glorify the stone throwers. He did not elevate the problems that he was facing because he could see things from a divine perspective. Our vision becomes F-bound, horizontal. Our prayer seems to bounce off the ceiling and God seems far removed from our pain when our spiritual viewpoint lack or when our viewpoint lacks spiritual dimensions their viewpoint lacks spiritual dimension god could not have been closer or more involved speaking as an anonymous stranger jesus peeled away the first layer and he said to them oh foolish ones and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. P 
peeling back the first layer, he then exposed the second. You see, the problem with Cleopas and his brother, his comrade, their own agenda determined their expectations. Cleophas wistfully added, but we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. You see, friends, as long as someone clings to his or her own agenda, he or she will remain blinded to the reality that God is in the present, in the process of creating. That God had a new covenant in mind. We typically view circumstances, especially those involving loss, as difficult because reality does not fulfill our expectations. Moreover, the impression that God has abandoned us to our suffering only intensifies the pain of loss and the frustrations of difficulties. These two followers on the road to Emmaus undoubtedly felt God forsaken as they mourned the death of their dreams. Ironically, the very perspective that caused their pain kept them from seeing Jesus in their presence. Let me encourage you to release your expectations. Hand them over to God and open your hands to receive whatever he chooses to place in your hand. Here is a prayer that I recently scrambled across and found to be helpful. The prayer says, Lord, I am willing to receive what you give, to lack what you withhold, to relinquish what you take, to suffer what you inflict, to be what you require. That is a prayer. Jesus helped them gain a divine perspective by teaching them from the scriptures, starting with the story of Genesis, applying the lyrics of the poets, and exposing the words of the poets, of the prophets. He demonstrated how the sacrificial death of the Messiah was required to defeat evil. He very likely reminded them of the seventh song in the book of Isaiah, one of their most favorite prophets. These songs feature a recurring figure called the servant of the Lord who will bring justice to the world. Isaiah says, 42, 1 to 4, Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry aloud or lift up his voice or make it heard in the, in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break. And a faintly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his law. This servant of the Lord leads his people into a right relationship with God. Because Isaiah says, and now the Lord says, he who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. This Jesus was there to die so that he can enlighten the nations and bring salvation to everyone. He says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to bring back the preserved of Israel. I will make you as a light for the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. And Jesus will endure unjust remulation. He says, I gave my back to those who strike and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from the disgrace and spitting. That is Isaiah 50 verse 6. And he bare the divine punishment others deserve. But he was pierced for our transgression. My pastor preached about this. He was crushed for our iniquities. 
Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. They fail, number three, which will be short. They fail to acknowledge the resurrection. They had heard the reports. They had all the facts. They simply refused to believe with their whole hearts. And their lack of belief affected everything. If these two disciples had believed that Jesus was alive, they would have behaved differently in at least two respects. One, they would have been walking towards Jerusalem, where Jesus was last seen, not away from Jerusalem. Secondly, they would have accepted the trials, the crucifixion, and the burial of Jesus as a fulfillment of all he promised, not as the end of their hopes. The death of Jesus begged an obvious question. How then will the Messiah establish his kingdom and reign over it if he's dead? That was their problem. When he was at the table with them, he took the bread and he blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from them. That's how Luke almost concludes. Their eyes were completely open and they came to fully comprehend him. They came to recognize Jesus in all his significance as the Messiah, the suffering servant, the son of God, and their risen Lord. Luke doesn't tell us why or how the breaking of bread opened their eyes. All we know for certain is that the scales fell from their eyes of the two disciples and they saw everything clearly for the first time. Clearly for the first time. Application. Our way to home. You are working through your life. You are walking whatever path, school, work, home, ministry, and then something happens to upset the routine. Or worse, something reduces your life to rubble. If God's presence seems far removed from you, be assured that he remains close by. However, you may have one or more faulty perspectives, blocking the light from your eyes. Let me suggest three practical decisions that will help you cope with daily struggles as well as recover from life-altering circumstances. Jesus said, it is written, men shall not live by bread alone, but by every way that comes from the mouth of God. He also said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Number one, choose to view life from God's eyes. That's the application. And this application is not the homework. This application is a decision that you need to make now. It's a decision that you have to allow God to work in your life now. This will not be easy because it doesn't come naturally to us. We cannot, this, we cannot do this on our own. And how do we, how do we choose to live through, to, to look at life through God's eyes? We start by reading the word, the Bible. We start doing so. And, and not, just as a, as a, as a, just, not just as a fulfillment of a ritual. We have to indulge ourselves in the word. And I can tell you right now, that will change your life immediately. That will change your life immediately. On the 13th of March, I celebrated 45 years being a Christian. And it is possible to be a Christian for 45 years and still find it difficult to look life through God's eyes because we don't spend time in the Word. Today is the 94th day. Today is the 94th day since I embarked on a journey 
to finish reading the whole Bible in a year. Let me tell you, every morning, every morning I read six chapters in the Bible. Two chapters in the Old Testament. One psalm, one proverb, two chapters in the New Testament plus a memory verse. Every day, every day, not easy. And up to now, I'm somewhere in Deuteronomy. I'm in Psalm 78 as we speak. I've read Proverbs for the fourth time because my plan requires that Proverbs you read every day. There's no day that you don't read Proverbs because if you don't read Proverbs, you become stupid. You become stupid, you don't become wise. You will lack wisdom. You'll be taken away by stupid things that derail stupid people out of God's way. Sorry to put it bluntly like that. I was supposed to say you'll become foolish. <laughs> Pray and ask God to transform your thinking. Let him do what you cannot. Ask him to give you an eternal divine perspective. Ask him to replace your way of thinking with his. He delights to respond to prayer invitations like that. I'm telling you, Bazalwan, I'm telling you, we now need to grow strong. It is tough out of there. You must be full of the word of God anytime. It is very difficult. You are not going to survive with a verse. You need a full menu with a starter and the main course and the dessert with tea and coffee. That's the word of God. Number two, surrender your expectations. Stop trying to change the universe to work the way you think it should. The sooner you accept that you will not get your way, the sooner you will heal. When you give up wishing things were different, you'll start to change within. Let go of those resentments. Release your grip on what you want. No matter how good or right you think it is. As you surrender your expectations, ask the Lord to show you his plan. You will find this in these 366 books of the Bible. Our only reliable source of truth. Pray and ask him to open your eyes to the future he desires and determine to join him in whatever he has chosen to do. Take your time with this. Transformation is a slow and sometimes a tedious process. Lastly, acknowledge the resurrection of Jesus Christ and, take, and stake your future upon it. A genuine belief in the fact of his resurrection, will radically transform how you approach life. The death of Jesus Christ conquered sin and overcome death's finality. But it's his resurrection that gives us life, hope, and reason to continue when everything appears hopeless. The risen Messiah offers us the same eternal, abundant life that he enjoys. In conclusion, pray to have an insight beyond sight. Stop, stop reasoning your life through everything. Stop being a Thomas. Stop being a finger person who wants to touch and prove everything. Allow God, allow God to make you see beyond sight. People see things the way the world sees them. But in things that people see, pray that God will make you to have an insight to see beyond sight. That's why Luke concludes by saying, when he was at a table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. 
and their eyes were opened. And they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. A literal translation of that last statement would be, he invisible became away from them. Meaning that he suddenly vanished from their midst once their eyes were opened. The disciples had been staring into the face of this Jesus, yet they were prevented from seeing him. The Lord allowed their pain to continue until their own desires no longer held them captive. When they wearied of their pain, they willingly released their own expectation. The very thing that had them and kept them from seeing Jesus in their presence. My brother, my sister, as I come to a conclusion, there's nothing more painful to be a human being on this planet Earth and you're struggling to see God for who God is. There's nothing more painful to walk on this planet Earth and struggle to have a relationship with God. You don't understand when they say they are saved, what does it mean? So this is how I'm concluding. If you are here today, if you are here today and you thought this is a normal conference, Easter conference or Easter day, I'm here to tell you that the resurrection of Jesus Christ is meant to open your eyes. It's meant to experience the presence of God in your life. It's meant to for you to appreciate that it's such a great privilege and honor to can declare that I am with God and God is in me. It's such a wonderful, gracious pleasure to walk with God. And that is made possible by the resurrection. You see, if Jesus did not rise from the dead, we will not be able to be saved today. We will not be able to say, God is our father. He needed to complete the mission that included him being resurrected from the dead. And maybe today is your day to see Jesus. Sometimes we are clouded, particularly Bomme, the sisters. We struggle to serve the Lord because we are looking for father figures. We are looking for father figures. You are grabbing every man that passes through the street because you want them to be the father figures to your children. Jesus is here today to say, my daddy, my daddy can be a better father. My daddy knows your name. My daddy knows even the number of hairs on your head. My daddy is even aware when one sparrow falls, how much more about you. My daddy will never disappoint your child. My daddy will make sure he attends the graduation of your child. My daddy will make sure that he doesn't depend, I mean, disappoint your child. Stop looking for father figures. Look for Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. And your Savior. That day when I got saved, 13th of March, I was sitting in a tent, let me tell you. I was sitting in a tent with a girlfriend. Don't think I was naughty, but I just said girlfriend. But I was not naughty. I was sitting with a girlfriend there. And the altar call was made for those who want to accept Jesus Christ to be their savior. Forget of anything about around you. Just come to the front and we pray for you. I jumped from that bench. And I found myself crying in the front. And I went back. I thought my girlfriend was also in the front. I found her seated on the, on the bench. I said, baby, I'm going to sing you Gibson Kent's song. Goodbye, sweet love. Oh, it's time to go. And I never regretted that moment. I never regretted that moment. God has been faithful. God has been faithful. My daddy is faithful. My daddy is faithful. 
The second thing is also an altar call. If I was you and you don't know Jesus, I'll be here right now. You can come here right now. Don't wait for Wednesday. Come now. Today is your day. Make right with Jesus. Allow him into your life. Let me tell you, times are bad. Times are bad. Times are bad. Don't waste time. If you are here, you don't know Jesus. Come here, we'll pray for you. And that which happened to me 45 years ago will happen into your life. Jesus will save you and he will never disappoint you. He will bless you. Second one is this. Brethren, this resurrection is about the resurrection of your dreams. It's about the resurrection of your hopes. It's about the resurrection of, you know, of, 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 of everything that you ever dreamt of. It's about the resurrections of the gifts that God has given you. It's about the resurrections of the passions for him that seems to be fainting. It's about the reconnection with the Holy Spirit. It's about the reconnection with God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. This resurrection is about getting, getting rid of religiosity and rituals. It's about a relationship that is alive with God. This resurrection is about you being able to see human beings as God sees them. This resurrection is about you being able to lay a hand upon those that you come across who are heavily laden. Don't wait to invite them to church. Pray for them. Liberate them right there because God wants to anoint you. God wants to use you. God wants to use you. God has anointed you. God has given you gifts. This resurrection is meaningless if you don't grab the opportunity to stand up and serve God as God will want you to serve him. You cannot come to church and expect like we are at the school. We are waiting for homework. There's no homework. Go ye into the world. Go ye into the world and serve God. This resurrection is about that. Thank you, my sister. This resurrection is about that. Resurrecting things that are dead in our lives. And God is saying to us today, I'm going to restore your life. I'm not only going to restore, I'm going to restitute. The devil is going to pay whatever he has taken from you. He's going to pay whatever he has taken from you. Because God, Jesus, is risen. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Jesus is risen. Stand up. Stand up. This is the altar call. There's going to be no reflections. No reflections. When I call the pastor, he's going to give benedictions. This is the altar call. Praise the Lord. Is there someone else? Is there someone else? Oh my God. There's a brother from the top. Are you coming? God bless you. God bless you. My brothers, my sisters, Sister Alice, Mam Ruti, come and pray. Come and pray. We are ready to pray for you. <coughs> God is awesome. God is changing trajectories. God is changing directions. God is blessing us. God is lifting us up. We will walk tall in this world. 
We'll walk tall in the name of Jesus. We'll walk tall in the name of Jesus. We'll declare Christ in the land of the living. Nothing will stop the force of the moving church of Jesus Christ. No gates of hell shall prevail. Jesus is risen. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody else who's free to pray, you can pray. I've got two other sisters this side. That's my sister and her brother here. You can help to pray, my sister. Thank you, Jesus. Love, 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 thank okay. you. Pray for Craig there. Help Alice to pray for Craig there. When you're done, you can take your seat. Before I call the pastor to do the benediction, there's one more gift I want to leave with you. That's for five minutes. I want us to listen to this clip and take it in your heart as a way of celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Well, 
is he, he, the only one able to supply all of our needs simultaneously. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He star God and he dies. He heals the sick. He cleans the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captives. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the age. He rewards the diligent. And he beautifies the meek. Do you know him? Well, my king is a king of knowledge. He's a wellspring of wisdom. He's a doorway of deliverance. He's a pathway of peace. He's a roadway of righteousness. He's a highway of holiness. He's a gateway of glory. He's a master of the mighty. He's a captain of the populace. He's the head of the heroes. He's the leader of the legislators. He's the overseer of the overcomers. He's the governor of governors. He's the prince of princes. He's the king of kings. And he's the lord of lords. That's my king. Yeah. His office is manifold. His promise is sure. His light is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. Well, I wish I could describe him to you, but he, he's indescribable. He's indescribable. Yeah. He, he's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. I'm trying to tell you, the heavens of heavens cannot contain him, let alone a man explaining him. You can't get him out of your mouth. You can't get him off of your hands. You can't outlive him, and you can't live without him. Well, Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. The witnesses couldn't get their testimonies to agree. And Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him, and the grave couldn't hold him. That's my king. Yeah. He always has been, and he always will be. I'm talking about he had no predecessor, and he'll have no successor. There was nobody before him, and there'll be nobody after him. You can't him, teach him, and he's not going to resign. That's my king. Here's the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Hey! All the power belongs to my king. We around here talking about black power, and white power, and green power. But it's God's power. Thine is the power. Yeah! And the glory. We trying to get prestige and honor and glory for ourselves, but the glory is all his. Yes, thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and ever and ever. How long is that? And ever and ever and ever and ever. And when you get through with all of the forever, then amen.
Amen. Beloved, God has spoken. Like those amazed men, we are on a journey. Maybe it's a journey we cannot understand. Maybe we are clouded in our minds by our situation and we cannot see beyond our situation. He's with us. We may not recognize him, but he's there with us. And he will peel back the layers. And when we discover it's him, surrender. Surrender your troubles. Surrender your pain. So that we can live in victory in Jesus. Thank you, Baba John. That's our king. Let us stand, beloved. Our visitors, please don't go. Please, we have some refreshments for you. We have even cook sisters and coffee. Where is Baba Modise now? Is he left? Visitors, please don't go. Stand squared. Please don't, don't leave. Guys, don't leave. Just come and join us there. The Malumas will also be there. You know when there are people... There are certain people when they see Baba Maluma is, is going to preach, then they come to church. So that's why I'm telling you, he's also going to be there. So don't leave. Okay? Let's receive the benediction. Those, Anna, so good to have you here, man. She's in Soweto. She's staying there. She's teaching there. But today she's joined us again. We thank God for her. Amen. Let's receive the benediction. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit abide with us all until Jesus comes. And we all say, Amen. God bless you. I love you.